So, yes, I completely, utterly, 100% failed. Dramatically failed at getting my webinar up and going last Friday. I sat down at the desk and I was super excited. I was in the right headspace. I was ready to go. And all of a sudden, it's it's supposed to go live at 11 a.m. All of a sudden, 10.58. I can't find the go live button. 10.59. Holy shit, what's happening? 11. What is going on? Like, it was a disaster. And I actually went into complete detail when I sent out my newsletter last week. So if you kind of want a glimpse of what actually had happened, let me know and I will gladly send you that email that I sent out to my girls last week. It went from time to time to time, like specific times, because I remember looking at the time and being like, oh, good God. I don't know shit. I don't know what I'm doing. And then I was freaking freaking out. I called my boyfriend and I was crying and it just, I could go on and on and on. However, I wanted to explain to you the things that I learned from this. I have heard numerous times over and over and over, you know, we all do. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Don't settle. Don't give up. Always, always, always. And one thing that I've heard a lot of as well is If you are not failing, you're not trying. And I have failed. I failed at launches. I've failed at um, making t-shirts that I thought were going to be successful. I have failed with um, different, different ideas. I have failed. However, those failures weren't public. And when I say I failed at this webinar like people were watching me there were people waiting for for me to come online to start speaking there is a little icon to the left where it was telling me how many people were waiting for bethany langland to start the webinar and i'm like oh no nothing's going right nothing's happening and then it was I felt like a complete loser, 100%. I felt nothing but disappointment for myself. I thought I had done 100% like foolproof research and I was going to nail it the first time. I was definitely mistaking. So I can talk about this failure forever and ever and ever. However, the things that you, you can either stay in two mindsets when things like this happen. You can stay in a, oh, everything happens to me. Why does everything happen to me? Very victim mentality. Or the second, the second way you can be thinking is, okay, it didn't work this time. But I also know when it does work, it's going to be bigger and it's going to be better than what I thought it was going to be the first time. So it's difficult to get in that headspace at the, I was about to say the click of a button, but like snap of of a finger, you know, when things are going wrong, it's hard to get in that mentality, but it's, but it's important that you do so you don't stay in that scarcity mentality or victim mentality because you will not win in life. So um, Gary V and Rachel Hollis, my two, my two big entrepreneurial like um, uh, people that I look up to in this space, there are a lot more, but those two are standing out here because they talk about failure all the time. Gary V talks about he loves to fail. He loves to fail because out of failure, there's going to be a success. There's going to be a win. You know, you have to love the journey or you're going to be miserable the whole entire time. And Rachel Hollis says the same thing. She says the quote that I had just said earlier. If you're not failing, you're not trying. So if you're not failing, you're not putting yourself out. You're not putting yourself out there. You're not taking, you're not taking risks. You're not, um, 
you know, you're not, I don't want to say living life like on the edge because some people don't like that. But if you're trying to progress in your life, you're going to have to risk some things to get there. You're going to have to risk some, um, some comfortability in your life to reach that success. So things that I learned out of this situation is number one, Always surround yourself with the people who are going to lift you up and who are also going to call you on your bullshit. So when I was on the phone with my boyfriend, James, he was telling me because I was crying and I was like, I just feel so incredibly dumb. I feel defeated. I feel like an idiot, a loser, all of the things I know inside I am not. I know that, but I felt like that. I felt very, very defeated. He said, he got up and he said, no, 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 no. You're not, and you know that you're not. We're just going to get back up. We're going to figure it out, and we're going to try again. You know, he kept um, he kept pushing the, those, those words of affirmation. He wasn't, he wasn't um, confirming my feelings. He was pulling what I actually am out of me. And it was just, it was a great moment. Okay. So number two, two things that, um, we learn never, ever, 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 ever settle. Right. So if I were to, well, you know, F this, I ain't doing it, you know, probably can't figure out any other system anyway. I'm settling on the feeling of feeling dumb and feeling like I can't do techie things and or research very well. So settling. Never, ever, ever, ever settle. And don't be afraid of failure. Three and four, if you if you reassess like why am I so afraid to fail because you're so freaking concerned about what other people think about you that's literally it if that icon of people if that wasn't there nine times out of ten I assure you I'd have been like well damn that sucks I thought I had it I thought I had it you know in the bag I thought it was gonna be a hit, hit the first time around but you know what No big deal. I'll just like try to do it tomorrow. But because those people were watching me and it literally said blank people are waiting for Bethany Langland. I'm like, oh, everybody hates me in the world and I'm the biggest failure. (laughs) Like I'm a terrible person because I can't figure it out kind of thing. So if people were not watching, I probably would not have had that same reaction. So not giving two shits about what people say. So I'm going to go off of that for a little bit. And Rachel Hollis talks about this as well. She says, which I think she, she had said that her therapist had told her why therapy is good. There you go. Therapy is very important. Little segue in there. But her therapist told her that other people's opinion of you good or bad, is none of your business. So if you're giving your, like, so for example, in this setting, I gave my 100%. I researched. Um, I did the time. Just It just didn't go right. Something didn't go right, but I did give my 100%. I should not be concerned about what other people are thinking of me when I'm giving my 100% and I'm putting myself out there and I'm putting everything out there. I should not be concerned whether they like it or not. I'm doing I'm doing my thing. I'm doing me. I'm trying to put my my two cents into the world to help other people. But if they can't see that, that's not my problem. That's not. I should not be concerned over the opinions, good or bad, that people have of me. So those are the things that we've learned, that I've learned from this lesson of failure and I wanted to share that with you because yes I failed I failed miserably and I felt I felt that failure however I I found another way and it's better more efficient foolproof so much easier I've tested over and over and over and it works like a dream and it's so simple so, so simple, and it's easier than I ever imagined. So when you're in that mindset of, like I talked about, talked about earlier of 
number one, being in that scarcity mindset of everything happens to me in that uh, scarcity and uh, victim mindset. Everything happens to me. Why is my life suck? Why doesn't anything happen right for me? Blah, 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 blah. You can be stuck in that or you can be stuck and choose, choose, you can choose to have the mindset of, okay, this isn't working, but I know that God works in my favor and he is going to give me something better, more efficient, easier for me, fill in the blank, whatever. He'll meet you halfway. So that's what we've learned. And now I've rescheduled it for Friday, January 31st at the same time, 11 a.m., Stand, uh, standard, good Lord, central standard time. And I hope everybody is able to come on board. I'm discussing three out of the 10 ways I've gained confidence in my life. And now I will be, I will also be <laughs> restating, reaffirming this failure into my, into not, I'm not going to put it one out of the three ways because the three ways that I'm going to be teaching and discussing are very important, but I'll definitely put in, um, my, my, um, what I've learned from this failure. And you know what? Maybe this is the reason. So I could have a whole other topic to teach you. So I'm very excited. So if you want more information on that, please DM me and I will send the link to you. All you have to do is click on it and then save your seat. It'll be January 31st at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. I appreciate you so, 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 so much.